lot of fun with the high school students here. We created some uh, very funny games about the dates, about the time, and about the family relative names. So we just uh, interacted with students. We just introduced something new and something fresh in Chinese. Uh, I think they brought a lot of enthusiasm in the classroom and then created a lot of um, competitive games for the students. In the high school, students like to uh, compete. So I think they are engaged in the activity with Wednesday University people very well. The China Bridge program, I think, is an incredible program for our students, um, primarily because I know that the best way for them to learn a language and uh, learn the appreciation for culture is to actually be immersed in it, to actually experience it firsthand. And this China Bridge summer program allows them to do just that. Earlier we held the Chinese language test for the Hanban Bridge Summer Camp program and I was in charge of the written test. I was so surprised because some of them can get 18 or 19 points out of 20 points. That was almost 100% correct. Their eagerness to go to China so makes me speech. so proud of my country. very proud to be a judge and I'm very happy to be a judge. I think it's a very enjoyable experience. When I see students like buzzing, very excited, with high expectations to answer, I think it's a very good experience. Who are, who are, who are we? We are, we are TC.
Okay, we're shooting supplementary videos today along with another video that you'll see a little bit later. The supplementary videos are meant to, to work on the vocabulary that is introduced in the Learn a Chinese Phrase video series. So right now we're working on the supplementary uh, video for chao you yu, which is fried squid. And so uh, what Professor Liang will be doing is explaining uh, different uses for the, the verb uh, chao, which is to fry, and uh, you yu, squid. And when we use the word um, yu, it's fish. And so she'll discuss different vocabulary words that will use that particular word in it. So right now we're, we're setting things up and you can see that she has her, her cue cards. Jeff is setting up the, the camera. He's got things ready to roll. And in post-production, we, we add the pictures. So as she says uh, a particular word, the picture will appear. She'll say, repeat after me. And so Jeff will do all of his uh, special effects in, in post-production. So this is basically where we do it and how we do it. All right, are you at your spot? Yeah. All right, great. The Learn a Chinese Phrase video series was sort of born um, from the idea that if you can learn a phrase that's fun or amusing, uh, you'll, you'll remember it. And uh, I can always remember when I learned Spanish, it was fun to learn the slang. Uh, a lot more fun than just to learn vocabulary words down, the, uh, down a page. And when I would learn that kind of slang, I would be able to incorporate it in other sentences elsewhere. So we sort of took that idea and thought, well, in Chinese, how can we get some really interesting, fun words that kids will want to learn and, and build on those? Professor Liang and I have written almost all of the skits together because it really takes two people uh, who can compare nuances of words and expressions and, and figure out just how they work. A lot of times we, we throw the expressions out that we think about working on because it's just a little bit too difficult to make them understood in a short period of time. So these are a lot of fun for us to do, and I enjoy sometimes being part of the, the post-production, the editing, and uh, you know seeing what we can do to piece some things together. So uh, they've been practicing this for about an hour, and uh, they should be ready for, uh, for some shooting. You took the prize baseball from Lao Ban's desk? Mm -hmm. He's going to kill you. That's all for today. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube or Yoku. Say Chen. We thought like we were going to be, you know, staying in huts and, you know, teepees and tents and all the rest of it, and then all of a sudden it pulls us up into this big city. Up to the school and all the kids would be on the second row and they'd be waiting for us and I'd get there and I'd wave and they'd wave and I was like, all right, I'm ready to start school. I really feel like I help some students out, maybe not with English per se, but with confidence, with motivation. Each kid had a smile that no person could fake. They all genuinely felt like they had the biggest treasure in the world that they wanted to show me. And it was really an eye-opening experience to see what these kids go through and that the fact that they don't give up, that they still are like, I am going to go to school, I want to be an English teacher, I want to help kids like how you came and helped us, Sophia, I want to be a Laosha like you. I needed those kids more than they needed me. And it was, uh, it was just something else. <laughs>
It's not enough to just speak Chinese in your classroom to the kids. It's not enough. It's not how much Chinese you use, it's how much they understand. You understand what I'm saying to you? Whatever it is that you do to make yourself understood. Comprehend, once people understand, it turns into output of language. You see what I'm saying to you? Input leads to output. Let's face it, guys. Language is not memorized. Get over it. Because what happens is language pops up in front of you, and you have to be ready to respond to the situation whether you have enough language or not.